Hello everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping that on you. Hope everybody's okay. Uh, look, we'll get right into it. If you like what you see in here, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. Uh, I also want you to uh, contribute. If you have something to say, if you feel some kind of way, whatever it is, that's what the comment field is for. Let me know what you're thinking. Uh, look, I saw an interview uh, on uh, The Pivot, which is a podcast with, with between three uh, former NFL players, one being Ryan Clark uh, and John Taylor and one other guy. Um, and they touch on some pretty good subjects, uh, some things that outside of sports are beyond the, the court of the field. Uh, and they had Floyd Mayweather on and they got to talking about something and I only saw a snippet of it so I can't give you the whole context so we have to be careful there but uh, the part I saw basically uh, Floyd Mayweather was saying he doesn't speak on and get involved in the hoopla and things being said about other people online that part I get and I respect but he specifically mentioned Diddy and the things that he's going through. And he says, I'm not going to come on and throw that man under the bus. Okay, I can even respect that. Then he says, even if it was my daughter, you know, I wouldn't like it. It would hurt me. But at the end of the day, it would be her choice. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. And so while I'm in my wait a minute phase, Ryan Clark comes on, come, come, you know, comes in, ch uh, chimes in and says, hey, uh, this is where we need to basically address this. And this is where I respectfully disagree. You know, one thing to throw somebody under the bus, you know, or just pile on. I mean, and for people who want to get some quick likes and all that, did is an easy mark right now. Uh, it's a bunch of stuff going on. It's a bunch of stuff out there. Uh, piling on is the easy thing to do. So I get that. So to say I, I'm not going to pile on the dude. Because the, and the reason Floyd gave was he's a black man. Okay, so he said that was the reason he gave. So he's a black man, so I'm not going to pile on him. I'm not going to throw him under the bus. I get that. Because far too often we jump right on the bandwagon and we go in on the slightest little thing we hear. But here's the thing. The things that they're talking about are things that happen to young ladies that didn't have a choice. And so when you say it's a choice, first of all, if it was my daughter, I don't give a damn if it was a choice. Me, 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 me is gonna have a problem. And uh, my babies know that. Now, I don't mean go out and do stupid stuff and just expect me to expect me to come rescue you. But I'm definitely not gonna ever come out and say, well, it was her choice. You know, if I say that in private, talking to her, look, that was a dumb decision. That's one thing. But to openly say that, well, Ryan sits up and he's, he, com he combats it by saying it wasn't a choice. If the allegations are true, and that's where you have to leave it until they're proven true. And you can draw your conclusions by the preponderance of the evidence that's out there. What you want to draw your conclusions to. I'm not here to sell you on a guilty or innocent thing. That's not why I'm here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is our proclivity to give celebrities, even if we are a celebrity, a pass. Because I'm pretty sure if it's not Diddy, Floyd isn't saying, you know, I would be hurt, but it would have been her choice. He'd have been sending his goons after whoever it is. But it's Diddy, so I don't want to throw that man name under the bus. Now, I mean, I want to throw his, hit him under the bus. I don't want to, you know, stump on his name or whatever. All the stuff that's coming out is stuff that's happened. These are actual facts of things that people, you know, that people have been looking at and viewing and seeing for real. There's been a lot of speculation over time. People tend to end up dead around Diddy. People end up... Uh, violated around Diddy. This is a common theme. This has been out there in the streets forever. But you know, you can cover a lot of stuff up with money for a long time until the right time comes. 
And we've been seeing that for the last 10, 15 years. People thought they were covered. People thought they were good. And it, it don't matter what race. They went after cars, but they went after fine. I mean, uh, what is his name? Uh, Weinstein and uh, the other one. Uh, they went after all of them. So, you know, eventually you got to pay the piper. You get to play for a while, but at some point you got to pay the piper. And that's what it is. And so whenever they call your card in, if you can't deliver on what they call, you got to pay the piper. It's too much bull crap going on. This isn't a conspiracy theory. This is just simple observation. Cats going buck wild. You can't tell me everybody in the world didn't know Bill's cars was out there slanging uh, uh, pills like it's crazy back in the 70s. Matter of fact, it's, he, he was notorious for it. And he wasn't the only one. It was a big thing going on. It was the sexual revolution, for God's sakes. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying that it's not shocking that it happened. It wasn't a Bill Cosby thing. It was a culture and time thing. And he may have took it too far. He may have did a bunch of other things. But at some point, uh, it was time to pay the piper. I mean, because we're talking 40 freaking years ago, and they brought it back and they sniped it. Okay, what I'm getting at here, is Floyd, come on, man. And what, what Ryan said, let me be clear, is, and the reason I'm speaking on it is because I commented on it and said, thank God that Ryan stepped in and spoke and clarified something because he said that we need to be clear. If a person didn't have a choice, it's not their fault. If they didn't choose to participate and they were violated, it's not their fault. And we need to be very clear on how we speak on that. And we shouldn't be given a pass to it. And my thing was when they came back at me, my thing is if you have a platform, uh, my platform is nowhere big as theirs. Uh, whether it's here, whether it's Facebook, uh, TikTok, Twitter, where my plat none of my platforms are as big as theirs. But I get invited to a lot of big platforms to be interviewed on the things that I do, especially epigenetics. Uh, and things to do with uh, psychosocial uh, situations within the black community and society as a whole. And if I'm on there and they ask me specifically about what's going on with Diddy, I'm not going on there. My mind is not to talk about Diddy when I go anywhere. But if, they, if I get on there and they ask me about it, at that moment, I have a responsibility to say, if the allegations are true, because until they're proven in court, the allegations, no matter how much we believe it, no matter how much we, 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 we have a system that says that's how we approach things. And I will apply the same level of respect in that, in, in that regard to my brother as I would have done it if it was a white dude, obviously, it alleged. Now, what I feel and think in my heart isn't the point. I'm I'm acknowledging that he has not been convicted of it, but we know he settled some things. But what we're going to say is, if the allegations are true, he's wrong and he needs to be held accountable. I have a responsibility to say that. I don't have to go hard in the paint on him. I have to call him a, a pig, a dog, a, 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 a skunk, and a whole bunch of other things and jump all on it and, and, and go for broke. But I do need to be very clear. I need to be very direct. I be, need to be very deliberate in my answer that absolutely uh, unequivocally what he did was wrong. And and, and, and and at that point, it's done. I don't. We don't We don't have to have a long, drawn-out conversation about it. That's the question you ask. That's the answer I'm giving. I'm not here for that, but you ask the question as a black man who is very, very, very given to the notion that it's the black man's responsibility to protect the black woman, not come up with every freaking reason in the book not to. And yes, she can be snazzy. Yes, she can get out to. Yes, they're out there doing all kind of crazy stuff. That's not all of them. Just like we don't want to be clumped in a bunch with the dude that's killing the baby, killing the girl, won't pay child support, won't. We don't want to be clumped in that. They don't want to be clumped in with the with the black women that are out there acting a pure ass, not letting their baby, their, their, their uh, uh, children see their fathers and all that stuff. Because all that stuff's out there. All this stuff we need to confront, we need to talk about. But what we need to understand is our roles. One of the roles of a black man 
is to defend and protect the black woman. It's not his only role, but it's prime. It is a primitive instinct when we are healthy that we protect those that we are supposed to be covering. And the covering isn't just in an intimate romantic relationship. The covering is in a cultural uh, community, village type mindset. So if you are part of the family, blacks, you deserve to be protected. Now, if you're out there doing things that push yourself in a situation, then we evaluate and are you worth the risk of me get, c coming into harm to protect you or going to, going go, going for broke to protect you when you're out there purposely taking yourself from underneath the covering? Those are different discussions. But the ultimate discussion is this. If you've got a daughter, and the beautiful thing that I think God did to me is he gave me eight of them. And, and in giving me eight of them, he gave me eight reasons to always try to be on my game. Have I been perfect? Hell no. But I am not one to intentionally bring harm to one. I'm going to do, I mean, I have conversations with my exes on a consistent basis. And I, my kids grown, all except one, grown. But we still cons consult and talk about what's best for the kids. We still check on one another to make sure we're okay. That's what we do. Now, is it all peaches and cream and everything is like, like clouds and cotton candy? Hell no. But I'm telling you that there's a responsibility. If I, and, and, and I stand in, in that situation still in the road of leadership. That is my responsibility. It's not pretty. It ain't fun. Who wants to be sit up and still connected? You know, if uh, the average guy doesn't want to sit up and still be connected and still feel responsible and all. But the bottom line is, we've got too many situations where we're moving through shit and leaving the leaving the uh, wake uh, 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 and disaster behind us. I refuse to do that. I can't make everything perfect, but what I can do is be available. And what I can do is say, this won't happen on my watch. What I can do is say, if a black woman is in my presence, she's safe. And what we've got to start doing more than anything is putting in the heads of the of, of young black young black males that harming a woman is wrong. And I think that is what Ryan Clark did more than anything. Is like, no, that's not acceptable. That's wrong. And it's not her fault. It's wrong. We have to draw a line. It's real clear because somebody said. So what? What does talking about it? And how does talking about it protect a woman? Number one is it draws a line in the sand. It establishes a clear understanding of what's acceptable, what's not, who's at fault, who's not. And, you know, and, and, and so, yes, talking about it does help. All of these things have an influence. Are there other things we need to do? Yes, that's why I created Black Men Lead as a rite of passage. You have to socialize young black males into being protectors, into being providers, into being leaders, into being heads, into being priests in their home and being prophets as they speak over their families. You have to program and inculcate that into their minds early on. That's what rite of passages are. That's why every other racial ethnic group has some form of it except us. And so we got a bunch of males that don't even know who they are. A bunch of black men with an identity crisis. And so it's okay to harm a black woman. I didn't say that you had to like every last one of them. I didn't say that you had to go out and treat them all and pay all their rent and all. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the black woman should feel safe in the presence of a black man. Period. That's the start of it. And the problem is the easy thing for so many to do now is to come up with the million reasons why I don't have to protect her, why I shouldn't have to protect her. She's number one is let me tell you something that I'm gonna be done because this this is, this shit runs me runs me hot. How we've come so far off of manhood that we're blaming everyone else because our leadership is father. Number one is if an NBA coach, NFL coach, any other sports coach has a team, no matter how trifling and sorry that team is, and they can't figure out a way to get that team to win, what happens? They're not on the damn court playing. They're not the ones not executing the plays, but who gets fired? Coach. Why? Leader. CEO comes in, and there are all these expectations for the CEO, and the CEO is sitting there, and shit's going, I mean, the company's going to shit. They may have to lay off employees if the, if the money isn't there, but the CEO is going to get fired. Why? 
leader. Leaders are responsible. The buck stops with you. You don't get to say, well, they're over there fucking up. Why are they fucking up? Why are you letting them? And I don't mean physically letting them. I mean, why are we, why are we in such a situation where everybody's doing whatever the hell they want to and everybody's harming everybody, everybody running game on everybody, everybody hates everybody. Somebody's supposed to be leading. And right now, that's not a fun place to be in because it's so screwed up. But that's what we need to be. Not sitting up talking about, well, if that was my daughter, I would be hurt. But at the end of the day, it would be her choice. That's where we're at. Think about that. Not for my babies. Try me. Try me. I have no problem whatsoever rocking a jumpsuit. You mess with mine. Try me. Now you don't control everything these kids do, but you, if you train them right, if you do things right, you reduce you reduce the risk of them getting themselves in situations. But you can't stop it. Things happen. These are individuals who make choices. But at the end of the day, you have to have a, a bubble around them that says, even if she tell you to do it, your ass better not do it. Because she can't save you from me. That's the problem. We've got to get back to that. The, the, the not on my watch mentality. Look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here because I, I get to going and won't be able to stop. But um, you got to do better. Look, how, let me know how you feel about it. Let, I mean, chime in in, in, in in the comment field. Let me know how you feel about it. One way or the other, your opinion is your opinion. Um, I'm going to chime in and respond to as many as I can, but I want you to let me know. And again, if you believe in the work we're doing, Black Man Lead, our research uh, and development, research and development uh, center, uh, all the things we do with mental health and domestic abuse. If you believe in that, show some love. Look in the de uh, description box and give. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.